St. Pete and Tampa are considered among the top cities that are most vulnerable for coastal flooding and sea level rise. As rapid development continues across our low-lying communities, meteorologist Autumn Robertson spoke to local scientists and climate experts across Tampa Bay who break down the risk of water surrounding the Tampa Bay area and how they're getting the message across to our policymakers. Tampa Bay is not immune to global sea level rise. In fact, it's already occurring. This graph shows the relative sea level trend at the St. Petersburg tidal gauge. Sea levels in the bay have risen 0.11 inches on average each year since 1947 to 2020, which totals to roughly 8.4 inches within that time span. And while that's less than a foot, that number could increase over time. The Tampa Bay Climate Science Advisory Panel details in a 2019 report that the Tampa Bay area might experience as little as two feet of sea level rise to as much as eight and a half feet by 2100. And while that range is wide, what's driving that high number is the uncertainty of human behavior. Simply put, we unfortunately do not know what our greenhouse gas emission scenario will be 80 years from now. We continue on like we like we currently are um, living, living our lives the way that we do and we don't make substantive policy changes and it's plausible that we see that um, the ice melt scenario in that upper end. Maya Burke with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program says even two to three feet of sea level rise will be very significant, especially for our barrier island communities. The thing that I want to make sure that is clear for people is to not get so super hung up about that eight and a half foot number because honestly that would be that would just be a total game changer. Fort DeSoto just sits three feet above sea level and with more people moving to the coast, it's important to understand how sea level rise will impact and reshape these communities and what that means for people, their welfare and safety. We'll have higher water levels, which will allow waves to act further on our shorelines. And so that can increase beach erosion over time. And in areas like Tampa Bay, um, our dunes are very low elevation and dunes are the first line of defense, especially during storm events to help prevent that storm surge, surge from reaching mainland areas. We'll have to spend plenty of dollars adapting to protect low lying areas or invest in offsetting greenhouse gas emissions so we don't end up in a situation where we're seeing two to three feet of sea level rise in the first place. So let's talk cash. According to the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council, Tampa could lose more than $15 billion in real estate value, $5 billion in property tax revenue, and 17,000 jobs as a result of sea level rise. The conversations surrounding climate change and offsetting greenhouse gas emissions can be tough, but progress is occurring simply by making the science accessible. The Florida Resilience Coastline Program awarded the city of Tampa a $75,000 grant to study the impacts of sea level rise and to identify key recommendations for resilience planning. Making the science accessible so that they can have those hard conversations is something um, that we're just starting to really begin in the region, but I do think that it's, it's it's a, it's a top tier priority for many of our elected officials. Having these conversations, extremely important strategies to reduce flood risk include installing living shorelines and elevating homes or air conditioning units. And while 2100 may seem ages away, experts suggest homeowners and developers invest in these strategies within the next two decades in order to protect property and our coastlines. Natalie, 